His Holiness the Dalai Lama has said that real compassion comes from seeing the suffering of others and you feel a sense of responsibility, you want to do something for them. The more we care for the happiness of others, the greater is our own sense of well-being. In Buddhism, this attitude of wishing to give ultimate benefit to others as much as possible is called bodhicitta. It's the heart of Buddhist practice. Now we all know an eye for an eye only makes the world blind. We hear this wisdom, but how can we really practice it? Buddha taught accessible methods for how to transform every heart, no matter how wounded, into one that only thinks of benefiting others. Join us as we learn how to develop this profound compassion. At the beginning of each of our teachings, we have been setting an appropriate motivation. That motivation has been the wish to achieve enlightenment in order to be able to benefit all living beings and lead them to enlightenment as well. This intention, this wish, is actually the mind of bodhicitta and is known also as the mind of enlightenment. Now bodhicitta is an attitude that is progressively developed step by step. And the very first step in that process of development is generating an appropriate motivation, a strong motivation for practice. And so before listening to these teachings, in your mind, make a strong determination to be able as quickly as possible to reach the state of Buddhahood, not for yourself alone, but in order to benefit all living beings. So once you have that kind of true understanding of the nature of suffering with relation to one's own existence, then you extend that um, understanding, that uh, recognition towards all other sentient beings and reflect upon their status as suffering beings and then cultivate the wish just as you yourself wish to be wish to attain freedom from the suffering, so too all of these uh, sentient beings wish to be free from suffering. And so in that way you cultivate a great compassion and the wish that all sentient beings enjoy happiness, which is the freedom from suffering, that is the loving kindness. So on the basis of compassion that wishes others to be free of suffering, and loving kindness that wishes others to enjoy happiness, then you cultivate uh, a, a sense of um, uh, a special responsibility. Uh, therefore, your compassion does not remain simply at the level of wish or aspiration, but rather it generates a sense of commitment and responsibility that I shall liberate all beings from uh, suffering. And this kind of extraordinary sense of responsibility will lead to the eventual realization of bodhicitta, which is the altruistic intention. Um, aspiring to attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. The bodhicitta is like the central axle of the Mahayana path. So therefore, it is this factor of bodhicitta which determines whether or not you are within the fold or outside the fold of the Bodhisattva practitioners. So if you lack the bodhicitta, this altruistic intention, 
uh, no matter how other powerful practices that you may have, such as the realization of emptiness, even direct realization of emptiness, or even nirvana that you may have attained, none of these practices become um, the uh, conduct of a bodhisattva. When you have the quality of bodhicitta, realization of bodhicitta, then even a simple act of virtue, such as feeding the ants, giving food to, an, to the ants, uh, may, which may seem a kind of a, an insignificant activity, but because of your uh, bodhicitta motivation, this altruistic intention, even these simple acts are transformed into uh, conditions for attainment of uh, full enlightenment. And um, so in a way it is like an elixir that transforms base metals into gold. I think answer for everything, answer for everything. I think that's the <clears throat> compassion, you know, bodhicitta. The purpose of my life is uh, not just to achieve happiness for myself, you know, free m- myself from my own problems, sufferings. <clears throat> purpose of my life is to uh, benefit others, uh, um, other sentient beings who are numberless. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, I must free them from all this, uh, the sovereign causes and uh, bring them to enlightenment. So when you generate this, th- this thought, this attitude of um, the bodhicitta, total benefit of others, <coughs> so it makes, it brings, uh, it brings so much peace, you know, c- c- contentment, fulfilling in your heart, it makes your life so happy. So usually there's two ways to develop bodhicitta. One technique to develop bodhicitta is uh, through uh, seven techniques of uh, uh, mind cause and effect. So you meditate how all the symptoms things happen in your mother and the kind. <coughs> uh, you see, get body, and then numberless kindness, you see, uh, uh, that, uh, see, Protect to one's own life from dangers. <coughs> the numberless kindness gave education, you know. Numberless uh, kindness, uh, you know, um, say, bears so much hardship for, for, for one's own happiness. That they, you know, when they have one's mother, and they bears, uh, you know, so much hardship, suffers so much, you know, uh, for. <coughs> to take care of oneself for one's own well-being, for one's own happiness. So, <clears throat> uh, like that, you see. <clears throat> then, uh, so this is how you mentioned it. In, in that technique, you see, the mother and the kind, you know. Uh, so then, you see, you feel, you feel uh, very precious. Uh, so you, this way, when you feel everybody being mother and kind, you know, you feel a bit uh, warm to you, you see. <clears throat> sort of, uh, uh, beauty, you see, it's not, it's not talking about beauty of the body, you see, the kindness, being kind. <clears throat> uh, so you see other symptoms being suffering, like or something being samsara, suffering, <clears throat> so uh, want, wish others to be free from suffering, cause of the suffering, and you want to do that, you see. <clears throat> so that there's a... Um, uh, the, <clears throat> when you take the responsibility on yourself, you know, the, to cause happiness to others, uh, the, that's the Mahana, you know, uh, the loving kindness. And this is my turn, this is my turn is to help them, so I must free them from all, you see, uh, I will free them from all the, su- all the sentiments, with all the sentiments without exception, from all the suffering and causes that bring them to enlightenment. By, by myself alone, so you took the full responsibility on yourself. Then, the source of that, <coughs> there's no other way except for myself to achieve uh, enlightenment. 
so that <coughs> when that thought rises naturally day and night you see without any effort just while you are you know eating walking in this thought naturally rises uh, <coughs> like the uh, like the you see uh, mother whose child fell in the fire or drowned you see in the uh, river or you see oceans something like that then <coughs> mother <coughs> while she's eating while she's working all the time constantly she, she think of that child <coughs> to save you see you know that <coughs> without any effort just couldn't survive. so uh, that is taught to uh, and then you see yeah so like that you see taught to achieve enlightenment you know to free the sentient beings from all the suffering and causes and bring them to enlightenment. So, so that time they one has a realization of Bodhicitta. So, but without Bodhicitta, we can't achieve uh, enlightenment. <coughs> so you can see now clear without compassion, cannot achieve enlightenment yourself, and cannot enlighten. You see, uh, cannot liberate all the sentient beings from all the sufferings and bring them to enlightenment not perfect person therefore. So therefore it's now here the compassion is the uh, uh, the most important thing in the life. One of these verses of Bodhicitta in the training uh, says, this chronic disease of constantly cherishing oneself, of the chronic disease of egoism, it, it is actually uh, the cause of all uh, the unwanted circumstances. Having recognized that this is the one to blame for uh, all the shortcomings, uh, bless me so I might be able to eliminate uh, this self-grasping, the practice of Tonglen, of uh, taking and giving. This is an incredible powerful practice, incredible powerful meditation, and uh, the immediate result, good result that you have uh, on uh, training your mind on the basis of Tonglen, so you, the, you will be able to develop a very uncommon powerful courage. You become really brave hard very, uh, very brave, so brave that you uh, sort of that nothing will be able to uh, to shake you anymore. You become as brave as being uh, that kind of courage, that kind of courage that you are sure you can take upon yourself the burden of all sentient beings, and you are able to give to all sentient beings whatever they need from yourself alone. So it means that uh, once you have acquire so much courage by training your mind, you won't be harmed by delusions anymore. Delusion arise in your mind, but you'll be able to conquer them right away. So once you have given, once you mentally, you have trained of giving, of being able to give yourself to others to that extent, the quality of your happiness will increase we <coughs> will increase tremendously is actually the best happiness you can find. If something happens to you when you have trained your mind so much with this meditation of giving, of giving and taking upon yourself the sufferings of sentient beings and giving out uh, whatever goodness you have, you cannot experience any more any loss because, you, because mentally you have given it already. So instead of, uh, instead of uh, encountering sufferings upon having losses, you actually, you, your mind becomes happier and happier. The actual meditation on taking and giving is as, uh, you, you should try to meditate in this way. So first of all, uh, you just visualize yourself surrounded by all sentient beings. Then you should begin gradually. 
first begin with yourself. You think, uh, you think of your own sufferings first, the sufferings of today, the sufferings of tomorrow, the suffering of this life, the, fu- the sufferings you might, might uh, and then increase it with the suffering of future life and so forth until you are comfortable accepting your own, your own sufferings ripening upon yourself. Then slowly move, o- move over to your parents. Move over to your parents, move over to your kids, move over to your husband or to your wife, to your family. And then you move over, once you're comfortable with that, you increase, you increase with uh, all your friends. Once you're comfortable with that, you increase with all your enemies. And once you're comfortable with that, you increase with all the strangers, all the human beings. And then once you're comfortable with that, you increase with all the animals and so on and so forth. You gradually build up the strength of your courage and your meditation until you are able to embrace all sentient beings. The meditation of taking and giving. In Tibetan, actually, stone land means uh, giving and taking. But from the point of view of uh, the practice, you first take and then give. You first take upon yourself and then you give out. So once you have this, on the basis of this uh, feeling of compassion, in begin to think that all these sufferings the sufferings of the hell beings of cold and, and heat, the sufferings of hunger and thirst of the predators and so on, each of them, for each sentient beings, uh, begin to uh, think that uh, they come out of the sentient beings like you know, a huge black cloud. And in the nature is the sufferings of the sentient beings and the causes, all those uh, non-virtuous actions which bring as a result uh, that type of suffering, and they just ripen on, on you. They just absorb right in the center of the heart where the self-cherishing thought stays, right there, and destroys it. They think that it ripens completely everything on yourself. And by doing this, think that I'm, I'm freeing all my mother's sentient beings from their sufferings. They're ripening upon me right now. Therefore, uh, from now on, all my mother's sentient beings, they will dwell in the... Uh, irreversible happiness, and I myself alone uh, am doing this. So generate a great joy at the end of your meditation of uh, having been able to do and been able to do so. So uh, at this point, uh, once you have taken in this way gradually, then it is a moment of giving. Giving is done, taking is done on the basis of great compassion wanting all sentient beings to be free from suffering. This is the meaning of compassion. So now you give with love. What is the meaning of love? Love, the wish of all sentient beings to be happy, to possess all their happiness, temporary and ultimate happiness that they wish for in accordance with their desire, exactly as they desire. But by using your breath with your visualization, mounting it with love and compassion to give and to take, it will become uh, it becomes quite powerful and uh, a quick method to realize uh, the mind of enlightenment. question in my mind that that bodhicitta is the root of all the foundation of all practices without bodhicitta none of it makes any sense it doesn't has it any power to it there's no juice to it no uh, from my experience there's no transformative effect to meditation without developing compassion it becomes a bit dry and um, ineffectual and it, and, and it creates a kind of uh, uh, cool detachment, which I don't think was the purpose of, of, of the, Buddha's, the Buddha's work. Uh, ultimately, the, the, the work that is achieved through the various practices is to break down all barriers. 
And there's no more tangible one than breaking down the barriers to having a compassionate open heart to all beings, uh, insects and, and uh, enemies included, um, to begin to approach a new kind of relationship with them, it, it, to me, really is the beginning of practice. Um, there's a very powerful practice that, um, simple practice, that I started using years and years and years ago. And it was simply every creature that I met, whether it was a person, an insect, whatever it may be, the first thought that I allowed myself to generate towards that other being was, I wish you happiness. Very simple thing. But make sure that the very first thought you have is, I wish you happiness. And how that totally transforms what happens after that point with this other person. This is my own, my own experience. I see this very clearly. Now, sometimes it's extremely difficult. You're faced with an enemy. You're faced with an immediate physical situation where something is in your face. It becomes very difficult. That's where the meditative process of, of being able to stop the arisal of an afflictive emotion becomes really important that there is an immediate space that you can create where you can see it arise. And before it actually takes you over, you're able to transform it. Okay, see it for what it is, that this is ignorance being manifest. This anger is nothing more than ignorance from my side and, and their side. Transform it, let it go. Transform it, turn it into love. I wish you happiness. If you just try that, what an extraordinary difference everything makes. birth is an amazing experience and for me the pain was so intense that it really allowed my mind to focus in a way that I very rarely if ever can otherwise and so during the process of birth when a contraction would come and it would just be so intense and so painful that was really the only time I've ever been able to practice Tonglen in a way that I felt like it was really powerful and it was really affecting it was really affecting my mind and it was the only thing that allowed my mind to get through that process because if I would freak out and lose concentration for a minute the pain would just be so overwhelming I couldn't handle it but then if I could just think of all all the others out there who had either experienced that kind of pain in similar situations or the n numerous other kinds of pain that people are experiencing all the time and I could think of trying to take on their suffering and to experience it and take it away from them in what I was feeling it somehow helped to keep it much more focused and it helped to keep it really uh, keep it bearable I can just I got a tiny taste during that process of how powerful Tonglen can be and and how amazing, like if you really practice that all the time and you just, or as a regular daily practice even, it would just change how you viewed the world so much. And then I think as a parent, you start to get a little opportunity to do that in the waking time. It's probably in practice, in being around my daughter, that's probably the only time <laughs> really that I'll have a desire and she'll have an opposing desire and I'll give in and do what she needs before I'll do what I need and so it's nice to see that and it's amazing to imagine what it would be like to have that feeling towards every other being you know on the planet and you can see some of these teachers that do have that feeling towards every being on the planet and it's amazing mm -hmm.